You're on, Dad. Well, here we are, another live question and answer. And uh, as usual, we have a very large studio audience today. Uh, Jimmy is, couldn't even get in the door, I think. One of his fans was blocking it, that big Doberman Pinscher, or whatever it is, the Great Dane. <laughs> right, Jimmy? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the biggest stuffed animal now that you guys put <laughs> Anyhow, Jimmy's here, and um, actually, we're going to continue working on this ottoman that we've done on a couple of the live shows, and I'm thinking that Jimmy might even be able to take this home today and finish it. He might be able to finish it uh, uh, live, we're not sure. I think I might do one pleat for him to see how he does on another pleat. But that's what he needs to do, I think. I think I have to catch myself up on that, actually. I'll take a quicker look at it later. But uh, as usual, we're going to just catch up with some business. And this is a question and answer, obviously, for all you people who have watched the YouTube and who are on the online classes and who are on the forum. This is your chance to get some live questions, if I can answer them. I mean, if we can't, we'll get back to you. Um, I don't think we've stumped... I don't think I've been stumped yet, uh, but, you know, that, that can happen. We had a very interesting online class today that I think um, you guys, once it's up, it's going to be a while before it's up, but it's Jimmy doing the channel back, or shell back, as you say, as uh, either term is okay. And uh, Jimmy has been um, cutting fabric today, which is really interesting. We, we give a lot of tips on how to cut fabric, how to measure fabric, and how to estimate fabric which you guys should check, check it out once it's posted. But we have, we have featured cutting fabric on some of our YouTube videos that you might want to check out. But uh, with Jimmy, as usual, uh, some of the questions that he's asked are, are, are very to the point, and it brings up other issues that I like to talk about that necessarily I don't when we do the YouTube videos. That's why, if you're watching for the first time, the online classes, I think, uh, from Janine is always commenting on how what a great value they are. She's been a fan uh, of those classes and the YouTube channel for quite some time. So check out her comments, which she's had. I think we're going to get to uh, one of her comments soon. Um, and you guys will uh, take it from the source. Um, I'll, I'll read from the source. So let's get started. I think, as usual, I want to thank Jimmy for being an administrator to the online classes. Very busy there, Jimmy, aren't you? Yes. We had a few new members this week. Yeah. I mean, what do you think we average uh, per week or per day? Or is, is it? Uh, uh, usually between two and five. That's great. That's really good. We're really happy with that. I think the forum is a really good source of information. And I think that if you check it out, um, but also is a good source of help. I think our, our people are so generous in um, asking or answering questions about upholstery on the, on the forum. Broadway Upholstery uh, Forum on Facebook. You guys should check it out. If you're not a member, join up. Um, and, you know, keep in mind, what we do here is traditional upholstery. Uh, this, so you're not going to see a lot of commercial, if any, commercial upholstery, which is a whole different form of upholstering. I'm not sure if people realize that. Um, our methods are old and time-tested methods, and some of them are my own unique methods, and I think Jimmy learned a few things today about that about how um, the certain way I do things. I do things to, to simplify it as much as I can and also to speed you guys up who are out there trying to make a living at this. So I think it's important. Um, so um, uh, we, as usual, the subscribers, we're really happy with how many subscribers we have on YouTube. So thank you. Keep those coming. Really appreciate it. Um, appreciate all of our people during crazy times that we had last year and you know that we got a lot of support. And we supported each other, didn't we, really? And I hope that you guys have enjoyed it from your viewpoint. So let's get going on some of the questions on YouTube. And this gets a lot. Crystal, uh, fixing a pop button for free. I think that was um, using your home. We did two of those. This one, I think, is using your home, uh, what you have at home, uh, in order to try to fix it instead of going out and purchasing, you know, a German needle which is the, which is, and the clasps, which, which are a little bit pricey. Um, so she says, around the button itself is becoming unsewn, making it loose. How does one fix the unsewn seam? Somewhere out there, in one of my videos, I think I show how to hand make a button. And I can explain it, actually. And what that would require, uh, she's, she, she's asking from a homeowner, right? So I'm, I'm going to give her an answer um, that she can do something with home tools. So I have to think properly. Um, if if she was a professional upholsterer, I said, well, just take a piece of fabric from somewhere underneath the sofa, go to your button machine, 
to right here, your professional button machine, and make yourself a new button. But she can't do that. So what I'm going to say is what she can do is go to a section. Hopefully she can find a 2 inch by 2 inch. I'm not sure how, she doesn't say how big her button is. doesn't matter whatever size her button is. Go and take a 2 inch square piece first. Put the button over that 2 inch square piece and then cut it round. And, and give yourself probably about, if it's a small button, you need only a half of an inch, if, if that. If it's a bigger button, you can do a three quarter of an inch around or oversize bigger than the button. And then what you're going to do is take a piece of strong, hopefully nylon thread that you have in the house. Or if you have cotton, double it up. And if you don't have a curved needle, a curved needle is perfect to do around the edge of that circle, right? And then go on to one of our, and then put the button in the inside. You're going to have two ends of twine coming out, which are ample, about 10, 12 inches, okay? Do you follow me so far, you guys? Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. It's a lot easier showing. So here is Crystal's, Crystal's button. Let's say she has a quarter size button, okay? And she needs a new button and she doesn't have all the equipment. She doesn't have a button machine. She doesn't want to go out and spend $600 for a professional button machine. So what she's going to do is, is that this button no good, but the, the, the button is good from the sense where the shell and the loop is still there, hopefully. Okay, so she's going to take a piece of fabric from somewhere else on the sofa that's about a two inch by a two inch, right? And then she's going to put that button over here. And then she's going to cut, let's just, then she's going to cut around here about three quarters of an inch on a quarter size button. She's going to cut the square down to like that, okay? Then she's going to take, let's bring this over here, then she's going to take, she's going to, stitch, take a, a piece of twine, maybe a, a yard long, thread a needle, hopefully a curved needle, if not a straight needle will be okay, a little awkward though. She's going to go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out with the twine all the way here, and then she's going to have two ends of the twine coming out like that. And she's going to take her button, right? This is fun, you guys, isn't it? She's going to take her button, put her button in here. Then she's going to go on the YouTube and she's going to find out how to do a slip knot. And I've got at least two videos and it's really slow. You could slow it down yourself, but I think one of them is better than the other one on those videos. But you'll find them. Go to the go to the Broadway Upholstery School at YouTube. And so so these two twines, they're about 12 inches long. Then she's going to do her slip knot. And then she's going to pull one end, which tightens all these threads around. It's going to get it right tight. Your loop is over here, by the way, right? This is the back of the butt. She's going to tighten all that up, and she's, and then she's going to tie it off, and she's made a button. She's got a button. And, and that, that would have cost a lot of money to get an upholster to come in and make a new button and then come back and put it, you know, use this German lean, all that. Then she could follow the fixed pop button from there because she's got a loop. That's all she needs. So there you go. I hope that was a help. <laughs> that was fun. I don't usually get to do graphics like that, but that was fun. That was only our first... YouTube question too. So let's go back. Any questions right now? <clears throat> Eileen Keys, she's been a long time uh, listener, I mean uh, viewer, and this was pricing in the upholstery business. Keep in mind, I don't know how old that is, you guys, that video. Um, I don't have that information in front of me, but if I had to guess, it's at least six months to a year ago. Keep in mind that that's time sensitive. So all the prices that I'm doing there, the prices aren't going down, I can tell you that. I mean, supplies are going up, labor's going up, rents are going up, everything's going up, gas is going up, the cost of doing business is going up. So I would say that if you have a video, let's say if you're watching this now, you may want to add, I don't know, 5 to 10% onto that if it's a year old. 5 to 10% off all the prices I quoted in that video. You guys really have to keep in touch with t t the times and what your hourly worth is. This is really hard for business, small business to do, um, especially people in the trades. No, except for plumbers. Plumbers are the only ones that actually get what they, what they deserve <laughs> because they bill out by the hour. And they actually bill out, what, by the 15 minute, by the quarter hour, Jimmy, half hour? I believe it's uh, so, quarter. Quarter hour. Things have changed a little bit. That means they're, they're getting paid what they, 
you know, people complain about plumbers, but that is the cost of doing business, whatever they whatever they're paying. So um, the upholstery show live Zoom classes starting Zoom soon. Wow, this was an old video. We should probably think about taking that down because Zoom classes never materialized. You guys just can't do it. I think it's probably more my fault than anything, uh, but I, I just can't teach in a Zoom class. I think things get lost in the translation. Maybe some upholsterer could do it, but right now I couldn't. I say right now because who knows what the technology could be in a year or two, right, Jimmy? That where that would be more well, you might suitable. Have, can't, you know, again, you might want to go back to uh, doing a small class and yeah. watching a, a, a project or two as they go along. We so tried doing good. the classes. That didn't work out so well because of the noise. And, and because it was just too fast-paced. I don't think Patrick could keep up with, with me, Jimmy, with all the different people. I mean, even, we, we, we didn't, yeah, that didn't work. I think you'd have to dedicate time to one or two people of, of the classes. Yeah. This is what they're doing. But Karen says uh, she grew up in Arlington, Mass. I wonder where she is now. That's all she said. Uh, Janine, now this is Janine's comment about um, we're doing the club chair. And remember, Jimmy, you, you helped with the measuring on that club chair? Yes. Part two was the apprentice work. Yes. So Janine has a great comment here. She says, this is a great example of why the online classes are so great for beginners. One, you get answers to questions that only beginners ask, and you need to know as they are formative in the basics of upholstery. Two, you can ask any question you may have in the weekly line, live question and answer, either for the online class project or as applies to your specific project. Three, the production and editing are great, and you get to see from several angles and up close and up close. So that's a shout out to Michaela and Patrick, whose work behind the scenes, you guys, um, I brought this up before, it's, it's worth bringing up again. It's amazing the work behind us. Every hour you see me blabbering away like this. They, not so much on the live classes, uh, but on the online classes and the YouTube videos. I think I think it's an equal amount of hours with the editing. I really do. I, I really believe that. So every hour that you see, so we have 400 hours maybe on YouTube and the online classes. I, I've lost count. So altogether, I'd say six, seven hundred hours of a video. Um, you times that by uh, two, and you get 1,400 hours. Um, that's a lot of hours. That's a lot of labor. So we're appreciative of them, and when we get comments like this, it just, you know, it keeps us going, and keeps us, you know, wanting to move forward to help people out there and hopefully change people's lives by giving them a trade. Um, I know some people um, have used this as supplemental income. They've learned enough on the YouTube channel. We'd like to hear from you guys, you know, keep us going. I, I hear from people, but I wonder, if, you know, that we don't hear from people who have we've made a difference in their life. I'd love to hear about that. I, I really enjoy reading about that. So Janine is really good at, at commenting. She has another comment with the club chair. Oh, we just have the slip cover. Week three, lesson three, pin fitting. This is Bernice, you guys. Uh, Bernice is, is teaching on camera by herself. But you want to talk about a treasure in the, in the slip cover industry. She has made a difference in that industry. She has methods of that she's showing you, that she's developed, that other people have used. And, um, you know, people teach, they teach somebody else and there's somebody else and, and you lose, well, who was the first person, you know? Who was the first person that thought of this? I can guarantee you that it was Bernice. She's been around, she actually did eight track tapes. So that's how long she's been around. She's still young though, I didn't want to say that. But you check out her class. Jeannie says, more great tips, looking forward to the next step in that. So being a teacher, you know, you um, sometimes you don't get the thanks and the gratitude that you know you probably deserve, but um, that's okay. Um, a good teacher, a good teacher uh, just likes teaching, you know. And I, I think in Bernice's case, she's been around and teaching for so long. She just loves teaching. She doesn't really necessarily need to hear from somebody that's made that she's made a difference in their life and is out there in the world making slipcovers based on what she taught, they might not even know that it was Bernice that, that, that makes them um, good enough to earn a living from that. So I don't know, I don't know what the point, I'm, I don't know what the point I'm making is, but I just think a lot of Bernice, I guess that's the point. So now we're off to the, any questions right now? 
No, no live questions? Okay, that's fine. I guess people just like hearing me blabber, right, Jimmy? Oh, I always say that. By the way, Jimmy, how was your uh, Bigfoot hunting uh, up in Maine? Did you did you did you have any luck with finding any no, of those? No, no, no. Maine was busy, and uh, a lot of new restaurants I tried. And did you find any little feet? I mean, uh, any, no, no, no. Medium sized feet. Not even a little. Not, nothing. I mean, nothing. Not even squirrel footprints. I think they were the, I think they went on vacation too. I don't blame them. What the Bigfoot? Where do they? Where does the Bigfoot go on vacation? Uh, really, like May, probably the uh, Moosehead Lake region. Well, well, I'm familiar with that up there. That's, Are you not? Yes, uh, that was my old stomping grounds. When? Hey, I just thought of it. You know, I have to take a size 13 Triple E, and they had some sightings up there, some Bigfoot. You don't think it was me, do you? Oh, good God, Kevin. <laughs> Next question. Patrick's not here. Thank God, uh, he would have had it. Pat he's, he's not here to, to take he's out the have old. that one out. I'm going to recommend that highly. <laughs> I hope he's listening. Poor Michaela, she's too shy to say move on. Yeah. <laughs> well, in all your years of tramping through the woods, you yeah. never found an antler. Oh, you know what? Can I have that? You're not going to believe. You know, these two, these two, were on an adventure oh. today, bike ride in a local, uh, local place, um, and and I'm glad Michaela brought it up. I've been I've been looking for, you know, a, a spent antler. You know, a, a antler just lying in the woods just to have for over 40, almost 50 years. I've been looking for something. Michaela finds this in the woods locally. This is what would you call that? A three point, three yeah. point, yeah, a, a three point antler, which is which is fine to take. I don't think there's any problem taking it. I mean, no. it would just be there anyhow, right, Jimmy? Yeah. But she's got they a fall off naturally. It's so. a naturally fell off, you guys. So don't worry about. It. But she's got a great souvenir. It's really special to find these. It's so hard to find. I don't know how. So that's a three-year-old. So that's, I didn't know every point represents a year. Yeah. I didn't know that. Do they fall off after three years or? They fall off every year. Every year. Every year. So she found that. They how she found bigger. that? What's that? They grow bigger. Oh, year. much bigger, right? How many points are you talking about? You know. I mean, didn't you ever watch Bambi? How many points did Bambi have, Jimmy? Uh, ten. Keep in mind, you're watching, you know, you're not just... I'm going to say 10, <laughs> when I remember 10. Well, I think, I, I don't know how she spotted that amongst all the all the branches. I think that's part of the problem, not finding these. It was right next to a tree, which would make sense. Oh, it was next to a tree. Was yeah. it standing up? No, it was just laying right in, right in the base of a tree, which would make sense because that's that how they... They put yeah, their... Yeah, they... Um, so there's a good tip if you guys are looking for antlers, trees. right? A good tip is look look near trees <laughs> instead of out in an open field, right? So that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Wow. Well, I wish I wish I found that. Anyhow. So the Facebook. Let's go to the Facebook forum. And we're gonna start with Gabrielle. She had a very interesting piece of furniture here. I am working on this original 1950s sofa. The frame is in good shape except for the fact it was stored in a damp cellar. I had the original cushions and fabric on the arms. You could tell that Gabriel's from around here, cellar. I mean, we people say basement, uh, other parts of the country. Is that a cellar? Is that a New England term, Jimmy? Cellar? Uh, yeah, I think so. I had the original... I, I, when people call it basement, oh, basement, oh yeah, right, got it, okay, yeah, now I know mean. I, I, it had the original cushions and fabric on the arms. You know, when she when I first looked at this, I looked at the arms. I said, "Those arms are cool, just the way they are." But those are upholstered. I'm going to show you this. Actually, Patrick's not here to show you, but I'm going to show you this. So let me continue reading. Um, so you got a good good idea what Gabriel's talking about. Um, I. I so she says it had the original cushions of fabric on the arms. The metal lacquer was worn and the surface rust is formed. I assume the metal spring system was never covered. I intended to remove the rust and give it a new coat of paint. I, I just want to make a comment about the seat here. So in answer to the question, they may not have covered it originally, but it's a good idea to cover it. And the best thing to cover it with, and I, I answered a quick answer to Gabriel on the, on the Facebook, but the reason that felt is the best thing is felt is a really good dense uh, and it's thin. 
So you really can't add too much in the way of thickness. And the reason you want to do that, and you could tie it, you could tie it down with ties or clips or something. The reason you want to do that is because the cushions that you put on will in no time wear out on one side with those springs if you just go over the springs. And those little side springs, those little small springs, will really do a number on the fabric. It'll pinch the fabric. So it's definitely a good idea to cover something and, and to keep, keep the away from the fabric. That's what you're doing. And then I think we have a question. Uh, no question, but we have a couple of comments. Okay, we have some comments. Uh, Randy says, Jimmy is looking in the wrong place for Bigfoot. He needs to visit northern Georgia. Oh. Northern Georgia. Right. Oh, I feel like we could probably do a road show there someday. Well, I still want enough Bigfoot hair to stuff a cushion, Jimmy. It'll be the most well, expensive. Yeah, you, well, you know what? I think going out that deep, I think I'd probably could gather something for you. Can you imagine how much that cushion will cost? If horse hair is $400 for like two pounds of horse hair, can you imagine what Bigfoot hair would be? Be extremely expensive, Jimmy. Yes, yes, and definitely not on an eBay. <laughs> and then we have another. And then uh, SG says, we say seller in, in the UK. Oh, they do. Well, okay. Oh, okay. I didn't know that, but I was thinking back to Bigfoot, Jimmy. Uh, if you can get Bigfoot to stay still enough to get a haircut, I think that's an How about accomplishment like a group too, shot? huh? How about a, like a portrait, like a, a portrait? <laughs> Why is it every time you see him on on Facebook or whatever, he's blurry and he's running and he's hiding? I, you know what? I know, I know. <laughs> but in the commercials, he's right there. Those, yeah, those commercials. My favorite commercial is the Slim Jim, right? Yeah. Right, he's right there. And we have another comment. Yes, comment. Uh, Gabrielle says, should the felt be boxed in or just a sheet of felt? Well, I think you need to cover the, uh, well, I've seen it just laid out with no, nothing attached to it. Um, you don't want to do any attachment on this. Well, you couldn't do any fixed attachment on this anyhow, anyhow Gabriel. But maybe what you can do is make yourself a little cover for it, like a little pinch, um, what do they call them, uh, pinch pleat covers, um, or really small, not not, bo not box, just a hem cover, and fill it, and then close out the hem. That would be a good idea, but the thing is, uh, I know that you were saying maybe maybe we can use ho rubberized horses too thick, way, way too thick, you're talking like this, by the time you're done, and you cover that, I'm afraid you might see the idea is not to see this through the front or the back. Um, so that's that's how you'd be. I was, I was be curious to know, um, did they even put anything on it uh, originally? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, then she says, my question is, do you think I should attach some sort of barrier between the springs and the cushion? And I think I just answered that. Yeah, I definitely think if you want to preserve the cushions and have reversible cushions, you definitely need to do that. And uh, I don't think that's... No right or wrong as far as the batting goes. I would prefer the felt because, of the, like I said, it's thin, it's got great consistency, and it's going to provide some type of padding with very minimum. So anything that you see me use traditionally, like a half-inch foam or inch foam or Dacron or combination of such, too thick, right? So let's go on to the next one. I'm going to hold this up again for people to get an idea what what... Gabriel is dealing with. I actually answered her on Facebook. I said, this is really cool machine age uh, work right here. I would call this machine age. Um, and like I said, I kind of like, I don't know what the finish would be on the arms, but it's kind of cool. Those bare arms, isn't it, Jimmy? Yeah. It's kind of like a, um, a combination or a meshing of, of wood, or old, old tradition to new tradition, which is the metal. It's kind of cool. And we got another question or comment. Uh, Randy asks, as for covering the base of that frame, my supplier has something called flex pad, half inch thick and very dense. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I, I, it sounds good to me, Randy. It really. So there you go. Um, there you go. I think that's a great solution. Um, Brad uh, King. Now he, he's got something here. This is for Jimmy. Jimmy, you're getting a lot of attention lately. I think um, maybe it's your, your acting career in the town, that, that movie, The Town, we mentioned last week. But Brad says, this is for Jimmy. You mentioned you would like to see some of my other furniture. 
Here is an 1830s American Empire couch. It's all Honduras mahogany. I just saw it. With crop, with crop burial on the top and bottom. I did the restoration of the wood and helped a professional upholster with the rest. This is in use every day. Oh, this is awesome. The graining, the graining on this is exceptional, you guys. Look at this. Look at the graining on that wood. But look at the fabric that was selected. I'd love to know how he did it. I mean, especially with that type of wood, that has to be so del. It's not an average wood. Well, stay tuned, Jimmy, because I have the San Francisco Earthquake Survivor Sofa that is coming up. I might show that in a YouTube, which is very similar to this. So that was what? What was the earthquake, Jimmy? Nineteen oh something in San Francisco. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Well, the sofa was older than the earthquake. Um, the sofa was probably 30 years before that, so you're probably talking about an 1870s. It looks like an empire, although I'm not sure if it is, because this is solid oak, and it weighs a ton, the one that I'm going to do. But this is a beautiful piece of furniture. I was going to say, Michaela, do you like the fabric selection with that wood? You see the graining on the fabric? Mm. I like the way it mi kind of mimics the, the, the wavy go graining of the wood, don't you? Yeah. I think, was that done, Brad, if he's watching? I don't know if he's on there. But I'd like to know if they picked the fabric out for that reason. Now, it looks like a paisley to me. I can't tell for sure, but it looks like a paisley. Great selection. I like it. I like it. I'm just looking over it myself. Oh, did you notice, you guys, on the bottom left, that the arms on this are solid. Did you see that, Jimmy? Yes. The solid outside arms. Did you see that? That's unusual. Very unusual. Beautiful piece of furniture. So that's that catches us up with, with this. I, I wanted to read um, one of the popular segments that uh, people have been positively uh, commenting on, which I'm going to continue, is some of the estimates I get and some of the conversations I have with my customers for training for you guys, I think for you beginners out there who are just starting to enter the marketplace. I think it might be a good thing, beneficial. Um, we have a new comment as we, well, that doesn't, doesn't say anything. Uh, let's see, let's go to some of the estimates that I've been getting. Let's go to scent. It'll probably be easier going here. Um, and look at some of the, some of the quotes that I've been giving out. Um, so this is a, um, an inquiry. Sometimes people really give me a lot of information, which they don't really have to do. A pitch is worth a thousand words. Um, this is a service is needed. Uh, hi, I'm looking to have an armchair reupholstered. So when somebody says an armchair, you guys, <laughs> there's so many different types of armchairs. You know, so in the old days, I would say, okay, you have an armchair. Is it, is it an open armchair? Is it a boarded? Does it have a border? Is it a rollover? Um, does it have nails in it? Um, you know, so, so you'd have to t kind of draw somebody out before you went to look at it. Just in the old days, just to try to get an idea what the cost would be so that you don't waste your time. I mean, technology is great that way. You get a picture instantaneously, which you sent, and the picture is, I could show you the picture, you guys. This is um, um, a board, has all kinds of borders. This is a slip cover that's on there now. She was looking for an estimate for upholstering. So, so this has a lot of cutting. It is a lot of welting. There's a lot of sewing in this project. So I estimated it out at $1,100 labor. That's Boston prices, you guys. And I, I think I'm about middle, uh, believe it or not, $1,100 labor. So when I look at a chair like this, plus she needs eight yards of fabric. So I'm giving her all the information. So she's going to either get back to me or, or just go away or say, oh, that's expensive. Well, okay. So, you, you know, you never know. I, I get all those reactions with, the, with pricing. And sometimes people want to justify your price. They kind of put you on the spot. So, but, but they really quickly understand, you know, when you're looking at a chair like this, you know, if you're getting like um, $80 an hour shop time, you know, um, and then you start figuring out how many actual hours you're talking about. Well, let's, let's bring the board over here. Let's bring the board and talk about this because I think people are really interested in this. So this chair is going to take me 15 hours at least. We'll break down the 15 hours, Kevin. What would that well, be? I'll break it down if you want. First, I'm going to try to figure this out. 
That's 1,200, isn't it? Is that right, Michaela? 80 yeah. times 50, right? 1,200? Yeah. 1,200. Yeah. I actually just shortchanged myself. Think about it. So my shop time is $80 an hour. But I know if I say 12, that's 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 going to go the that's not going to benefit me. But that's from the time you strip it down and not that's A to Z. That's that's stripping it down. Okay. That's cutting the fabric. Okay. That's sewing the fabric. That's putting the fabric on. Uh, oftentimes we don't include um, the talking, the consult that we do with people. Like I'm doing now, I would be doing with the client. You know, then if they say yes to the estimate beyond that, I have to call them and, and get a hard copy made up, but then there's another conversation about do you want it done the same way? What type of fabric would I recommend? They would probably ask me that. So there's probably another hour of cons, uh, consult that goes on. Okay. So now you're, I'm not even at the fabric stage, right? So now I'm, I'm into it for 17 hours, right? So then all of a sudden, my, my I'm not really hitting my goal there, but to, the, there is at the market, will only bear so much okay so I kind of throw in okay I, I could be I could make it work for seventy dollars an hour so these are the things you have to think about so that, that's the process and you're gonna ask me so the fabric comes in and Michaela uh, does a good job with the fabric so let's just talk about the fabric now okay let's just erase this so you guys I have finally decided that I can no longer take customers on material anymore. There's so many bad fabrics out there. I've decided that we're gonna, we have to be in control of what what we what we put the labor into. So we're doing a lot of fabrics, okay. our own fabrics now. Um, but on this particular piece that I just showed you, it's a club chair. It's called a club chair. Club chair. You need, and it has a skirt. Let's say they want the skirt put back. Sometimes today we're doing no skirt. So with the skirt, you're talking nine yards, no skirt, eight yards, okay? Well, what type of fabric do I want? And then, then that conversation starts up. And now here we get a little bit time, this little time co consuming with fabrics, for sure. You know, because, you know, it, today the industry is, it, the, we're, we're dealing with mills that are closing all the time. We have a question. So when we have a question, you guys, we jump right to the question. Uh, well, this is a well, kind comment. of a little bit of both. Um, Randy says, more info on pricing, please. The more I listen to you, the more I think I am undercharging big time. I could tell you probably, are, uh, Randy. From what Randy and I, we've gone back and he's expressed to me, I know that he's a professional upholsterer, definitely. And we do not really do this well. And, and we uh, reference him back to the pricing video that we did. I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly uh, how in-depth we went there, but I think from this segment that we're offering now, we're going to continue this segment because I think people are really interested. Of course, I'm not sure, Randy told me, Wisconsin, I think. So I'm not sure the demographics in Wisconsin, but I'm sure in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, the Milwaukee area and the suburbs of Milwaukee, you're going to be able to get more money for your, for your pricing, but the cost of living is up too. So if Randy's in the country, he has to adjust to that. Even in Boston, I'm I'm in I'm probably uh, from downtown Boston. I'm only about ten mi eight to ten miles. So I, I can I could command Boston prices where I am. I'm also paying a lot for the rent and the cost of living. So I but but if you work out, um, you know I don't know if you're familiar with Boston, but we have Route 128. We used to call it, or now they call it 90 95. Yeah, 95. Um, that's one belt, and within that belt, you can pretty much stay within Boston prices. Sometimes close to the belt, you have to get less. But then when you get outside 95, and there's another route called 495, which circum they call that the circumventing highway, I think, or whatever it is. But in between that mass of land, your prices go dramatically down. I'd say, I'd say the prices go down 25% at least. And then when you go outside that area, to Western Massachusetts, right? We're not talking a major city. Maybe Worcester. Worcester. Worcester's a secondary city in Massachusetts, but in Worcester's Western, more central. Central, yeah. but in in central to Western, the prices dramatically go down again to about fifty percent. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. So I'm giving. I hope I'm not giving away information to. <laughs> I don't know if how many people consumers are watching this show, but if our if you're a consumer. 
you may you may want to travel out there, travel uh, to an upholster out there because you're going to realize uh, a savings there if you're willing to do that. A lot of people don't don't do that though because the convenience is another thing. So where was I? Let's get back to the fabric. Isn't this interesting, Randy? So Randy, I don't know if you do your own consulting with your fabric. I don't know if you have a helper that does that. Fabric's a whole different issue than labor. So already, um, I'm minus uh, $100 on this, of what I would like to get on the labor. I'm already, so how do I make that $100 up? Well, this is one of the reasons why I, I no more COMs for me. And it's a big step for me because, you know, it's, it's, it's an insecurity there about that. But, you know, th because of this, because of this, I need to make up that profit somewhere. So what do I do? Well, let's go to the club chair, the, the skirt, nine yards and eight yards. Let's say they want to do the nine yards, which you hope they do because that's an extra yard of fabric. So the average fabric today, guess what? We had a conversation, you guys. Guess what the average fabric is? $100 a yard. Not, not 80. We were taking 80 for a long time. It's 100 now for a decorative, for a nice decorative fabric that's an upholstery weight fabric. It's 100 bucks a yard. And I'm not talking about anything less than that. I'd be really careful if, if I were you. Now, that's retail, Jimmy. Wow. Okay, so what does that mean? That's $900, right? We get half of that at 450 Then I minus the 100 from that, and I'm 350 I make 350 on that, plus I add that to my labor, which is 1100 zero, 0.054. So the whole job, not including taxes, is 1450 to the client. So 1450 to the client. I'm happy. I made my I made my labor back. Sometimes that number goes up to minus 200, by the way, because you might run into trouble. You might run into something that's a basic labor price. I didn't even say it. You know that's a that's that's a you know if the fabric if the chair's in good shape, you know, and I, I don't have to do spring tying or anything like that. Even minor spring tying can up your hours. Okay, you could end up spending 21 hours on this club chair. Then you're really finished because you know you have to you have to stand by your word. Even in a picture, uh, I I I don't like to go back to the client and say, listen, I had extra work in this. Sometimes clients come to me and they say, you know, I know that this is a little odd. I'm going to give you extra money because I have a really good clientele. Well, you did a client like that, we have a couple. We've had a couple lately. They they understand small business. I can tell you that. But anyhow, so so this is a 1450 Boston Boston right. High, let's say, low, no, medium high. I'd say that's a medium high price, right, for Boston. My demographics, that's Boston. That's that's 10 miles from Boston is the, is the high price. Now, what is it going to cost for a club chair, for a quality club chair at a, at a uh, really high-end store? Um, and most of the furniture that I do is in comparison when I compare them. Most of it is is probably really a top level furniture to reupholster, so they're going to be spending four thousand dollars, Jimmy, 4, for a club for a new club chair. So this is the this is where I can really you know justify fourteen fifty. And even if the fabric crawls up to one hundred twenty dollars and you're closer to eighteen hundred, still you're under half what it would cost to buy new. Now. When somebody comes to me with a medium, medium grade, this number gets a little smaller, I'm talking 2100 maybe. So the pricing gets a little closer, uh, but it still makes it still makes sense. But some, sometimes people still need a little push. So it's part of the sales. I said, well, um, what about recycling? You're recycling. You know, you, if you're close, these numbers close, right? You could use that as kind of a selling point. You know, uh, you're going to throw a club chair away into the landfill and one has to be produced. So that's kind of like a double whammy to the environment. That's kind of like a sales. And I haven't yes. really used that a lot, but it's always good when somebody's on the fence. You know, you can bring up those things. And sometimes it's the difference between getting a job and not getting a job. So, Randy, I don't know um, if you've thought about all this, but there you go. Now... Jimmy, I think it's time for Jimmy to come up. Unless there's any other qu questions, comments. Uh, okay, good. So, Jimmy, can you come up here, Jimmy? And um, Oh, if I have to. Jimmy's brought his friends here today to watch him. His whole family, his great-aunt Nellie, 
his uncle Sam. Nice uncle to see Sam. you. Um, there used to be a. <laughs> I think those are like the, one of those three. I think you're doing my relatives from the three stooges. <laughs> Jimmy, there used to be a show called Candle Pins for Cash in Boston. Yes, I remember. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have a question, Jimmy. Oh, I'm Maybe sorry. Maybe it's for Jimmy. Um, okay, so Gabrielle asks, do you turn low quality away? Sometimes I do. Uh, I'll tell you why. Um, that's a reflection. If that's a reflection on your labor, if you're going to upholster something that you know is going to break, like we're seeing a lot of this now. Um, it's not worth it, you guys. It's not worth it. It's, it's maybe to repair those pieces. It's a it's a low price point to repair them. You would do something like that, but um, sometimes it's not worth the fabric that you put over the front. Well, I think maybe sometimes if a, somebody if it means that much to a person, uh, an older chair. Well, older chairs are usually good quality. She's asking about a low end. A low end piece, and there's a follow up uh, question, I think. Yeah, she says, such as items with press board. Oh, oh, yeah. And she also asks, where do you draw the line? Yeah, I think I draw the line with that. I think, you know, like, I, I don't want to mention any brand names, but this furniture, let's face it, is, is not made to last at a, at, to the next Never. upholstery. Uh, so, um, and here's how we know. The furniture business, the manufacturers have gotten their hand, I mentioned this, their hand definitely caught in the cookie jar here because they are producing f furniture before the pandemic to have seedings of, of, of a certain amount of seedings per year, let's say. So they're counting on, you know, you come home after a long day, you sit on your sofa, watch a half hour TV, one sitting, a couple of sittings. That's how they, our life before the pandemic that's how they, there's a certain time that they want your furniture to last so that you, when, when it finally either breaks or the fabric starts peeling off, like in the case of faux leathers, you're ready to, to, to not reupholster. Because when you call up the manufacturer and say, hey, I, you know, I, I, li I like my piece, but where can I get it upholstered? Oh, don't bother with those people. That's how they say it. Buy new. That's the way to do it. That's what they were counting on. However, the pandemic has increased seedings. 300, 400, 1,000 percent or yes, more. Yes, everybody's home. Everybody's, everybody's home. home. So what happens? You buy a piece before the pandemic, right before the pandemic, and you're, you're a year into it, and your cushions are sagging, your, the, the sofa's broken, and the, and the fabric is peeling off. So they got and caught. And you're still sleeping in that chair he was nine months late, nine months ago. <laughs> so they got caught. Um, so uh, am I going to be able to do anything with the piece of furniture like that? I don't think so. Mm. So we do we do pass on some some of that inferior furniture. I, I'm sad to say. Yeah. I do things like trying to enhance it. I'll do new cushioning, just to try to extend. I, what I try to do is put it on life support, right? I try to extend well, that do they, furniture. Do they use the coil springs a lot? What's no, the, no the, coil springs in low-end furniture. You're lucky if you get zigzag springs. You're getting what you're getting is rubberized. Uh, rubber webbing, if you're lucky. Uh, usually now tell, tell people about the rubber webbing. I've heard this once before from you, so I don't. Well, the rubber it. webbing is no good. I mean, it's it doesn't last. It's so many reasons why it isn't good. Okay. The best seating is uh, is is a coil spring, eight way tie, hardwood hardwood frame, um, and as many natural fibers as you can use. But you've seen me countless times tell this. I had an upholster once. I was trying to repair. I was repairing a springs on a, on a big sofa. And, I'm tired and tired, and then he got frustrated. He he, he made a comment and said, "Oh, well, you should just be done with it. Get rid of the springs and put a piece of four-inch foam in there." Well, that would be wrong, you know. So the coil springs are the best, Jimmy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get to Jimmy. Unless there's any other questions. Anybody have a question for Jimmy? Cricket. Yes. I'm Crickets. <laughs> I don't know how. Did, what is did, a cricket? Did, did, you make the sound of a cricket. Did I say you suck today? <laughs> Jimmy, what, what does a cricket say? I, not much. I mean, <laughs> you guys, you know, you know big do you boy. Do you know where I do know deer, one thing yeah. about a? Well, go ahead. Do you know ahead. one thing about a cricket? I want to get you out in the woods somewhere and just leave you in that. Then, Kevin, yeah. What's the next sound you're going to hear? Absolutely. I got a trivia question for you, Jimmy. Uh, where does the noise that a cricket makes? How do they make the noise? With their legs. Yes. See? That's right. You think you, you, think you don't go. know anything? No, I know. You think you know they hang lot. around the kitchen and cook and bake all day? They got a lot of crickets down there in the subway. 
No, we have the we have a larger variety of rats. And, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, nothing nothing you know out of out of control yet. Although <laughs> some that we could probably use as a bait for something else. But you know, like you know, <laughs> some of those mammals in the water. I'm sure they would love it. Like a is a rat a mammal? Yeah. Is it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is it? It is. Yeah. Uh, rad expert says it is. Oh god, I'm not gonna talk it. A mammal I'm is anything <coughs> that has live birth. Ah. I didn't know that, Jimmy. Oh uh, well I think we should probably turn the show over to Michaela. <laughs> and <laughs> well this is a this isn't a nature show, except Well it could be. I mean she knows an awful lot. She well maybe it is in a way. We talk about horse hair, uh, moss, cotton. That's all natural, Bigfoot or Next thing you know, hands. we're going to be expanding to like repair, house repairs. You know, maybe we, we could put you a pair of overalls on you. Hey, I just had a sofa leave here uh, that was uh, from Germany. Okay. And it, oh, the one that we I helped you with. It was done, and 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 the, and I made a comment to the customer about they wanted to know how it was coming. It says coming out great. I said think the old North Bridge and old Ironsides when you're thinking about your sofa. That then is. It, that's an old, that's about the time. How old is that? So 200, 200 years. But no. the planking that they used, I think, was re, uh, what do they call it? Reclaimed or recycled from something else. And I think the planking on the bottom was older than the sofa. Oh, so wow. it's possible that, that the planking was 250 to 300 years old. But then I, when the customers came and I was explaining this to them, and it has all handmade nails in it. You know, we, we go to the hardware store now and buy manufactured nails by the pound. Right. Back then, it was all handmade by a, by a blacksmith, Yeah, right? so when you see those square nails, there's, there's something Square to nails it. an indication with no seams. That's a handmade nail, but that had all those in it. Wow. And I warned them. I said, you know when you go into a country store and the floor squeaks? Yeah. Think that when you sit on this. I said, there's some squeaking, squeaking, but it's the it's a very endearing part of this sofa. And she says, "Yeah, I know it squeaked before." I said, "Well, it's going to." Well, some people again. want all that taken out. Oh they, no. they want pure silence. You know, I'll they tell say. you how important a squeak is in a wooden floor. You know, there's a local coffee shop. Well, they're a national brand, and it's not Star, uh, the one that starts with Star. Uh, they have when you go into some of their stores, they have wooden floors that were intentionally made to squeak. There was there's like a subfloor there that, that. So you're gonna leave? Is that where you're gonna leave my next iced coffee? Some kind of call? Hey, I got somebody. That's your hint, Jimmy. That next time I would like a cup of coffee. Oh, the, that me, would be the me endearing. From you, me to yes, you. Yes, that would be the endearing thing you could Bad do for chance. me. Bad chance. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, we. Got I mean, we have one only a hundred yards away. I should have asked you actually. I mean, I'll have to do that next time. I You've said that, that every is a, time for Because five you know years. what? They have scones there. The, the, the shop that you... They you have scones? I, scones. Oh, scones. Don't they? My favorite thing in the whole world. Just cinnamon, orange, Ooh, blueberry. Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't even look at the... the it doesn't matter. A scone I, is a scone. Well, I mean, some people have that. Like their cinnamon chip and orange and... Help yourself to any scone you want to give uh, them me. Absolutely. So, so I think... Uh, we really got off track there. Patrick not being here really is tough, isn't it? No, it's a lot, actually works a lot better. Thank you. I mean, we're drifting away. We're right now in the we're middle right of the now, Atlantic Ocean. We're almost Ocean. into Michaela's nature show. <laughs> and uh, you're talking rats. And you asked else. what we had down there, so I'm telling you. Let's I, bring I, this over here. Can I have that cup? Yes. So I want to show people when they're making this decision about um, how many pleats do I put in. Well, where do the pleats go? When you have a round, this is going to be a little harder for you to do, Jimmy, because this well, is round. This is round. This is not. This doesn't corner out. This is a round. This is round. So every time you see something round, you need. My advice is you need two pleats. Okay. Okay. So if you need two pleats, first of all, I just want to make sure that we're. Let's just bring this up a little bit. Let's just do a little securing. I know that you guys aren't going to see a great angle on this, but I just want to get a couple of tacks staples in here just to tighten it up a little bit around here. I'm going to give Jimmy homework uh, after I show him how to do this. Um, so let's just get this secured too because we lost a couple of tacks. Is that what you did? You well, took my quality tackmanship? Oh my god, you got it. I don't know. So we're securing this. Let's bring this up. Now. 
Show me what you mean by double sleeves. Yeah. Give it. See if we can get the camera. See if you can make sure that we're not hiding what we're doing here. So I'm going to come down here. It's very important when you're when you're putting your first staple in that you're evening the fabric up. You know, you don't want to be like this because then you have more fabric that way, right, Jimmy? Yeah. So the idea is that you're going to be putting two, it's going to be a V pleat. So you want to make sure, Jimmy, that you've got an even amount of fabric. This first tack is so important. Okay. So you want to make sure that you have an even amount of fabric on both sides. Okay. And then you put your staple in. Okay. Watch. See that? Ah, okay, because that was going to wrap it around a different way. And then, another important thing is you want to make sure you trim this before you start putting your pleats over because you only have a single welt that, that's going to cover this. You could put a double welt, I suppose. And then the other important thing is watch what I do, Jimmy. I'm just going to take my thumb and get a staple, an angled staple this way, and an angled staple this way. You can even get another one up in here. Now, is that the, what is, why, is, why so many staples in that corner? Because I want to make sure that I get a nice straight pleat. Let's see. Let's do this one first, just in case. Sometimes you can relax it a little bit by cutting up like that. And then you can get another staple here. This is being a little stubborn up for me. Look at this. Mm. Let's just Can cut you? it a little bit more. Mm. You would be nervous with cutting it, huh, Jimmy? I think so, because I'd be afraid to cut it so much that I wouldn't have I wouldn't be able to get the shape that I wanted. So I think we got that pretty well done. Let me just get another staple here. Oops. Actually, you know what? We get a regulator to help us. Just get in there to look at that, huh? No, now you did it. Now you did it. Like that. Then you can even take your regulator and kind of work it out like this. Look at that. And then I'm going to just get, get in the way a little bit. Okay. No, it's for the camera. Say to Hollywood now. Now, the reason I was struggling so hard on that one was because I know that I had to get that one set first so that this pleat. This was the easier pleat. It was just working right out for me, but this needed a little bit more work. You'll find that because fabric is woven or it might be tight in one area. I don't know if you're following me, but I got a nice even pleat. So I'm going to even look up to see how this one's a little higher. So I'm going to try to get this it's high. a little higher. I don't know if you saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, it's not very good. So you want, mm -hmm. you want it to be right. So maybe we'll just cut this a little bit just to give us a little bit more slack up there. Look at that, huh? See that? I actually kind of forced that to be longer. Get on the there. And for all you guys who are, you know, hesitant on doing this, pin tacking is always advisable, right? Well, that's what I did. It was kind of tough being at home doing this. I you know. No bench or anything, so. So the other thing I want to show you is that you got a little opening here that you can kind of pull your fabric through like that. And then this gets more stapling. And then this gets cut this way. It pulls through there. Staple here. Trim this up nice. Trim this up. Let's put this. Not bad, huh? Nope. So what you could do, optional, is to is to uh, close this up with the blind stitch, which is fine. Um, but I want to see, Jim, how I you... Think it looks, I think it looks pretty good that yeah. way. Why don't you see how you do on the other ones? That's your oh. homework. I don't think I want to press you. You know what I know what I want you to do, actually, for the camera right now? What's that? Try to get the first staple on this pleat from what I told you. And I think 
you're really going to have to either sit down. No. You really have to get a little eye level with that, Jimmy, and then staple it. We're putting you on. We're, we're, we're putting Jimmy on the pressure here. He's used to pressure. Yeah, every day. Every day when I get out of bed. Now hold on, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> so, can I see that for a second? Yeah. Is it too much fabric? You know what you could use? Okay, you notice. Know, I just wanted to stop you there for a minute. Okay. Pull this down first and, stay, and secure that first. Okay. Now try to get your first staple in. So what you did, do you know what you did wrong? Yeah, I didn't. I got it too much into too much on this side. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of struggling with that, um, I think we're going to close up. But I just want to make a point about that. So I really, uh, when you're down here doing this, mm -hmm. you really kind of have to work the fabric one way or the other sometimes to get an even amount of fabric on both sides. And that's a crucial, that's very crucial to get in the V-pleat, right? Okay. Is that for a staple. Yeah. So you need to practice that. I want you to take this home, do a little practice to see. You have one done so you can reflect back on that. Right. But just to see how you do, maybe bring it back next week. Yep. If you want, and then yep. we'll, we'll see how you did, all right? Okay, sounds so good. I think, th Jimmy, thank you for joining us, and I think I'm going to have you close us out. Well, it was a busy week here at Upholstery on Broadway. We're going to be having, I think, uh, maybe the Ottoman come back next week, but we definitely will be showing my chair, the uh, wing, uh, channel back chair, a little bit more with, again, with the measurements of all the fabric we have, and uh, we'll hopefully be putting a few pieces together next week for you. So, anyone, have a good week. Thank you, everybody.